Hi YouTube, it's Ivy and welcome to another speed paint. Today I'm going to be talking about how I've been able to whip out all my mermaids this month really quickly. It is day 11 and this is the first day that I'm going to be late on any of them because most of the time I've been able to whip through a couple of these in a day even though they're fully colored pieces. This does help that I have a good understanding of anatomy and practice and composition and stuff like that so it's pretty easy for me to get a sketch down but hey I'll talk a little bit about how I've been able to do it anyway. One of the things that really helps in the sketchy line art phase is to not worry too much about how you are doing your line art. Um, it can be really messy and there's some tricks that you can use like with the chains. I used a drop shadow to establish just like a chain shape and kind of edit it over it. And you can use these kind of layer effects like drop shadows and stuff like that to get line art in many situations like doing ropes, shoelaces, chains, jewelry, things like that. Anything that needs to be kind of a straight line with just, you know, a line art around it. And it's not too particular about what weight your lines need to have, you can cheat it a little bit by using drop shadows and stuff like that. Don't worry too much about your line art being super clean because in the method that we're using, it doesn't matter too much about where your shapes are defined. Just make sure that the shapes that you really need, like your silhouettes, are solid and besides that, you're good. So I'm going to go over real quick how I use layer effects like drop shadows to create really quick line art. This kind of line art doesn't really hold a lot of weight, but it is a really fast way to get down basic things. So right here I have just a simple round brush, the kind of thing that I would use for line art anyways. I'm here on a new layer and you're going to want to bring up your blending options. So you can double click this right here to bring them up or right click it and go to blending options. You can also use the stroke effect, but in this case, I'm just used to using drop shadow, so that works just fine. Blending mode should be normal, and I'm gonna use black, because this is the color that our line art is gonna be. Your opacity should be at 100%, your distance zero, and your spread 100. Now your size can vary depending on how thick you want your line art, but it can always be adjusted later, so I'm just kind of kind of roughly guess maybe a little smaller than that. That's at six. So you can imagine even right now, I let's say I'm gonna do this shoelace. So here is my kind of basic shape. And I'll do another one um, underneath it so I can kind of keep this lace shape and then underneath it I'll have the lacing. And if you want to do this on multiple layers, it's also very quick to just right click this and copy your layer style and then I'll paste it below on this one. And you're good to go. So this would work for a line art. Um, I would recommend coming on top of this and, you know, doing some detailing and just making it look a little bit more, um, you know, raw like the whole thing wasn't completely done by a computer. So now we have some really nice usable line art. I mean it's not perfect but it will definitely do if you're doing a quick piece like Mermaid. These kind of things work really well. The only problem with this exact thing that we have right now is that if you color underneath it it's going to be white inside because we colored in with white. So that's a really simple fix, especially for this one. All we need to do is set our fill down to zero. Super simple. And then we're going to want to lock that in place by creating a new layer underneath this one and just right click this layer and merge it down. And then you have this nice, simple little line art thing right there. This one is going to be just a tad more complicated. I'm also going to set the fill to zero, but you can see right now we have some overlap, so we need to fix that really quick. I'm going to do the same thing and merge this down, but in this case I'm going to use a magic wand tool and select all the areas that I do want to keep. 
expand this selection just a little bit, invert it, and I'll talk about that in just one second. So with this selection, this is all the stuff that we don't want shown below. So I'm just going to go down to this layer, clear it with the delete key, and you have super nice, transparent, clean laces. Perfect. Super fast. I'm going to go over real quick how I do my flats in these groups, and it just makes things a lot easier to manage. So I'm going to show you how I managed to get this group where the whole group, no matter how many layers I put inside of it, will always stay within the mask of this group. So see I'm drawing outside of these lines, but it'll always stay inside. So how you get that? We'll use this figure as a secondary example. Go to the magic wand tool. Um, your tolerance might vary. You'll want anti-aliasing on for sure. Your contiguous, I guess that's how you say that, checked, correct. And then just click the outside of this section and it will select everything outside. And from this point, I will go to select, modify, and expand. And I'll expand it by one to three pixels, depending on how thick my line art is. In this case, two is just fine. Then I will go over to the layer section and create a new group, which is this little folder icon right here. I will invert my selection. And you can do this by going to the select um, and inverse right here, but also shift control I is a quick little shortcut to do so. And then this mask tool right here is what you're looking for. So you just need to click that. And since you have your selection good, it'll create it right here. You can see the mask is like this. So then when you create layers inside of this group, I'll fill this in, it will all stay inside. Now from there, you'll probably want to go through a couple edits. So how this works is all the whites of this mask will show up. So if I'm painting on this mask with this mask selected, then wherever I paint white will show through. And of course, on the flip side of that, wherever I paint black will be hidden. So I'll just go through and clean up a couple of these little sections that wouldn't have any color there, just where your edges are a little sharp. And that's just a quick way to get your silhouettes down really crisp and clean. You don't have to worry about it too much after that. <laughs> Now, how I color these is actually a really cheaty process. I'm actually shading the whole thing all at one time, so that means that I can just apply flat colors kind of willy-nilly on one layer and really get a lot of details in on the basic layer because I know I'm not going to have to go into each different color and shade them individually. I'm just doing all the color right on top at the end. So my flats, the layers can be a total mess and you'll see that in how I'm doing it right here on this crystal. I'm adding so many different colors because I know I'm not going to have to shade each color individually. It makes it so much faster. I actually do this process in kind of a couple different parts in this video and I think it looks a little bit confusing so I'm going to use another mermaid that I've done as an example and I'll kind of show that in the corner. I start with just of course my line art and a quick sketch and then I do my full flat colors um, that means no shading or anything. I do kind of paint the background just because I only really allude to it. I don't deal with details in the backgrounds or line arts or anything. I just kind of do sort of a blurry thing that you get the sense of what it looks like or what it's supposed to be, but there's really no detail there or anything. And that actually does help the overall feeling of your image because you're not distracted by the background at all. You're really focusing in on the characters. So it's kind of like having a depth of field blur, but you're also saving time and being lazy in the process. And from there, I create a shading layer using just gray and white and set it to multiply. And that just gives us kind of a really default quick way of shading. I don't have to worry about the colors or the tones or anything like that at all. It's just black and white. And it leaves us with this. Now on this, I also have added another layer set to overlay and I just use white to add some highlights. And overlay is smart enough to kind of know how to bring some color out. 
However, this does still look kind of flat. So I continue to work with overlays and other layer styles to bring some more effects in and make it look a little bit more lively. And by the end of it, just using kind of cheaty layer effects, honestly, it looks pretty good. You can see me applying pretty much all of these tricks to the piece that I'm showing you today. I've definitely used a lot of overlay effects. I've even used rainbow gradients to really emphasize how bright and colorful I wanted this to be. So lots of shine, lots of overlay layers, stuff like that. Is it cheap? Oh my gosh, absolutely. But it looks cool in the end. And besides that, who really cares? There's a lot of different layer effects that can really help you a lot if you figure out how to use them. Photoshop is such a great tool to just speed up your work. I mean, you're still gonna need basic skills and fundamentals and to learn how to use it, but there's no denying that there's definite tips and tricks that you can apply to doing specifically digital art. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can see all of my mermaids on Instagram and Twitter. I post them every day, except for maybe today if I don't make it. Uh, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Show me if you're doing mermaid. I love it so much. Thank you guys. See you next time.